Okay, well, thank you for coming. I'm gonna go back 37 years to 1985, and I'm sure some of you probably had younger kids in 1985, um, and uh, you probably remember some of the things that uh, happened in 1985. My name is Evan Wiener, and I was uh, 29 years old when I was with Muhammad Ali over there, and I'm sure you remember Muhammad Ali. Unfortunately, by this time in his life, he could barely speak because Parkinson's kicked in. It was Ronald Reagan's second term. Mikhail Gorbachev becomes the uh, leader of the Soviet Union. Uh, the Soviets are in Afghanistan. Uh, the Middle East in 1985, and uh, that is a picture of uh, Mubarak and uh, also uh, King Hussein from Jordan. The Middle East, of course, a mess. There was a TWA hijacking. Uh, there was the uh, hijacking of the Kilo Loro uh, cruise ship, and, uh, which was at, uh, resulted in the death really of hard. one passenger. Uh, 1985. There's something that happened that uh, the Gibraltar. Uh, Live Aid, 1985, uh, where a lot of money was raised for uh, hunger. Uh, Nixon returns, and I was there when Nixon returns to proper society, and uh, oh, there, there he is, there he is, Richard Nixon, and uh, there was a baseball strike in 1985. I remember this rather well, maybe some of you do too when Coca-Cola decided to change its formula. And I bought up as much Coca-Cola as could be, which was stupid because it rotted out my teeth by the time I was 49. But I couldn't get my, I couldn't stand new Coke. But I had cases upon cases upon cases of old Coke. You remember when they went to new Coke? To me it was terrible. Oh, you can't get your kicks anymore on Route 66. That was decommissioned. Bill Gates comes up with a new system for computers. Uh, Steve Jobs quits at Apple. Uh, the Golden Girls, how many of you watch The Golden Girls still to this day? Yeah. Okay, and there is B. Arthur and Rue McClanahan and uh, Betty White and Estelle Getty, The Golden Girls. Uh, Mike Tyson uh, emerges in 1985. Uh, some of you who might have had kids, you know, uh, teenagers and uh, younger, might remember the Super Mario Brothers coming out. The United States Football League is done as an entity. They raised part of the Titanic uh, off of Halifax. And uh, I have uh, friends who live in Halifax. Uh, I don't know if they got impacted by the hurricane. Uh, yesterday I sent them a note, but I haven't heard it back. Huh? Ronald Reagan yeah. is re-elected in 1984. He beats Walter Mondale, and here he is being sworn in as the President of the United States for a second tour. Uh, Reagan had a reliable global partner in England's Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher. He was also at the height of his popularity in the United States, receiving overwhelming support in the 1984 election. He won 49 Actually, he won 49 of 50 states. Uh, the other uh, state that didn't go for him was uh, Washington, D.C., and that's not a state. Uh, the Soviet Union would see another leader die, and a younger man took over in the Kremlin. Uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, who was, by Soviet standards, at least young and energetic, he wasn't in the 70s and 80s like all the previous leaders in the 1980s. Uh, American leaders didn't expect very much from Gorbachev. Uh, he had been molded by the political system that shaped his predecessors, like Leonard Brezhnev and, uh, and the others. Uh, so he takes over in the USSR, and people are very surprised by him because he decides he's going to change the culture of the USSR. On March 11, Gorbachev was picked to succeed Konstantin Chernenko as the new General Secretary of the Soviet Union following Chernenko's uh, death the day before. Uh, Gorbachev quickly set about uh, consolidating his personal power in the Soviet leadership. His primary domestic goal was to resuscitate the stagnant Soviet economy after years of drift and low growth during the uh, Leonor Brezhnev years between 1964 and 82. Gorbachev wanted a rapid technology modernization. He wanted increased worker productivity, 
and uh, he wanted to do something about the uh, cumbersome Soviet bureaucracy, make it more effective and responsive. And there is Gorbachev in his first year. Uh, when he became the head of the Communist Party in 1985, he launched something called Perestroika, Strika, or restructuring. He uh, pursued an economic policy that was aimed to increase economic growth while increasing capital investment, which you don't do in communist countries, right? His goal was quite plain, uh, bring the Soviet Union up to uh, the economic standards of the West. And eventually, Gorbachev would sit down with Ronald Reagan. And they would form something of a partnership during Reagan's second term, which was totally unexpected when he got there. Uh, they meet in November at the, the Geneva summit, or at the Geneva summit, and the two world leaders uh, focused on de-escalating the nuclear arms race between the two superpowers, and uh, came up with hopes of fostering better relationships between the East and West. But Gorbachev has a problem. You might remember that National Geographic uh, cover with the girl with the eyes. I mean, mesmerizing eyes. Look at the mesmerizing eyes. But the Soviets remained in Afghanistan. They started their assault in Afghanistan in 1979. Here it is, six years later, and they're still there. The United States increased its support to uh, Afghans to $250 million a year. Uh, U.S. Congressman, Char uh, thanks to U.S. Congressman Charlie Wilson, uh, the CIA Director William Casey, and growing support within the United States. The shift culminated in the National Security Directive 166, which was signed by Reagan and set the clear objective in Afghanistan, push the Soviets out. The CIA provided cash, weapons, technical advice on weapons, explosives, intelligence, technology, wireless interception equipment, and trained the Osama bin Laden. Ronald Reagan, in some ways, is responsible for Osama bin Laden. At the Politburo meeting on October 17th, Gorbachev read letters from Soviet citizens expressing growing dissatisfaction with the war in Afghanistan. So what's going on today with the Russians uh, basically are growing dissatisfied with the Ukrainian action. Uh, mothers were grieving over the dead, uh, crippled, heart-wrenching descriptions of funerals. Soviets uh, invaded Afghanistan Christmas Eve 1979. They had a concern, since Afghanistan was in their backyard, that the country was unstable, and they wanted to do so. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, here's Yasser Arafat. Uh, in your lifetimes, my lifetime, there has never been a day of peace in the Middle East. Has there? never been a day of peace in the Middle East. 1985, no, you know, 1944, 1945, 1946, 47, Israel becomes a state in 48, uh, and there's the Palestinian question. On February 11th, King Hussein and the PLO chief Yasser Arafat signed an accord to jointly negotiate peace with Israel. The talks held some promise uh, of a Middle East peace accord in exchange for Israel's withdrawal from territories it had occupied since 1987, or rather 67, this is 18 years later. Israel completed its troop withdrawal from southern Lebanon on June 6, leaving a few hundred troops in the area as observers. American Thomas Sutherland is kidnapped in Beirut on June 9th. Uh, before I go on, uh, one of the assignments I had at CBS in the 1990s, or maybe it was the late 1980s, was interviewing Terry Waite, who is an envoy from the uh, uh, Archbishop of Canterbury's office in England. And he was um, in uh, captivity in Lebanon for many, many years. And I said to him one of my first questions, how did they treat you? And he said, in all honesty, not that bad. Could have been a lot worse. Uh, TWA Flight 847. On the morning of June 14, 139 passengers uh, passed through the Athens International Airport security and boarded TWA Flight 847. They're going to go to Rome, then Boston, then Los Angeles, and end up in San Diego. 20 minutes into the short hop to Rome, two Lebanese Shiite, Shiite terrorists rose from their seats, brandishing weapons, and ran up the aisle screaming, 
that they were commandeering the plane. Uh, Hassan is al Din, who's 22 years old, and Muhammad Ali Hamadat, 21, have exploited a loophole in the airport's already taxed security by boarding from the transit lounge. Now, you would think this happened right in 1985. You'd think by 2001, they would tighten security, knowing what was going on in the Middle East with hijacked planes. They never did. They never did. And you know what happened on September 11, 2001. And there is a TWA flight for 847. The terrorists had uh, kicked the cop, picked the door open and entered. Hama, Hama, Hamendi, uh, pistol whip, uh, flight engineer Christian Zimmerman, and first officer Philip uh, Mariska, and demanded the plane uh, divert to Beirut. As the plane approached the Lebanese capital, the Beirut control tower refused to let it land. Airport officials turned off the landing strip lights and moved buses and blockades onto the runway. After 10 minutes, the Lebanese relented. The tarmac was clear. The runway lights turned on, and the plane touched down. The 153 passengers and crew members were held hostage. A number of the hostages were tied and beaten by the hijackers. A 23-year-old U.S. Navy diver, Robert Dean Stetham, was one of the hostages shot dead and his body was thrown onto the tarmac at the Beirut airport. The hijackers then began to release some of the hostages. And there is Hamad D, a hijacker. Over 17 days, the TWA pilot, John Trestek, Trek, John Trestek, uh, was forced to crisscross the Mediterranean from Beirut to Algiers and back again, landing in Beirut three times before he was finally allowed to stop. Uh, the demands from, uh, the, from the people taking the hostages, simple. Release the Kuwait 17. They were involved in the bombing of the Kuwait Embassy in 1983. Release 766 mainly Lebanese Shiite uh, transferred to Israel's uh, Atlet prison in connection or conjunction with the immediate withdrawal of uh, Israeli forces from southern Lebanon international accommodation of Israel and the United States. Here are some of the hostages that were released. On June 30th, all 39 Americans held captive by the Shiite Muslim uh, Amal militia in Lebanon were released almost three weeks in captivity. Their freedom was secured after a dimension by the Syrian president, Hafez al-Assad. The White House said no deal had been done with the captives. According to the FBI, at least four people were involved in the hijacking. Muhammad Ali Hamadan, uh, Imad uh, Mugiye, uh, Hassan Iz al-Din, and Ali Atwa. This was Leon Klinghoffer. I don't know if you remember Leon Klinghoffer. Elderly gentleman. Elderly gentleman, right? Why are they going after an elderly gentleman in a wheelchair? Why? Uh, on October 7th, four members of the Palestinian Liberation Front hijacked the Italian cruise ship, the Achille Laurel, and demanded the release of Palestinian prisoners in Israel. Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak persuaded the hijackers to surrender, but not before they shot to death a wheelchair-bound Jewish passenger from the United States named Leon Klinghoffer, dumping his body overboard. Abu Abbas. Um, Mubarak allowed the PLF leader and hijacking mastermind uh, Mohammed Zanin and other terrorists to fly to their headquarters in Tunisia where uh, Yasser Arafat was in exile. The president, Ronald Reagan, sent warplanes to intercept the flight, force it to land at the United States Italian Air Force Base in Sicily. The United States and Italy fought over jurisdiction in the case, but the Italians refused to extradite any of the men. Uh, Saddam was allowed to go to Yugoslavia. An Italian court convicted 11 of 15 associates with hijacking, while Saddam and another terrorist were tried in absentia, found guilty, and sentenced to life in prison. The Middle East initiatives for peace are a failure. Again, they're always a failure, aren't they? They're always a failure. In October, King Hussein of Jordan met with the leaders of the Palestine Liberation Organization but failed to resolve their policy differences over terrorism or to agree on the joint approach 
to negotiations with Israel. Hussein issued a statement indicating that considerable differences emerged at the meeting and suggested that the king sharply criticized the PLO's recent behavior. Hussein told interviewers that a series of recent developments, including the hijacking of the Italian cruise ship Achille Lauro and the cancellation of talks between the Jordanian PLO delegation and British officers, left him very unhappy with the PLO and forced him to reassess his relations with the organization. Well, again, 2001, 9-11, there were four planes. I've told you about one of the planes of 1985, and yet, 16 years, no fixes. Egypt, Air Flight 648, November 23rd, Flight 648 took off at 8 p.m. on its uh, Athens to Cairo route. Ten minutes after takeoff, three Palestinian members of Abu Nadal hijacked the aircraft, terrorists declaring themselves Egypt's revolution over the ink to come and were heavily armed with guns and grenades. Libya was the original destination of the hijackers, but due to the lack of fuel and damage from the shootout and negative publicity, let's go to Malta instead. Malta is a little island not too far away and would be a more suitable option. At first, uh, Maltese authorities were optimistic that they could solve the crisis. Malta had good relations with the Arab world. Without warning, Egyptian commandos uh, launched a raid about an hour and a half before it was originally planned. They blasted open the passenger doors and the luggage compartment doors with explosive. Uh, Bonanici claimed that uh, these unauthorized explosions caused the uh, internal plastic of the plane to catch fire, causing widespread suffocation. The storming of the aircraft killed 54 of the remaining 87 passengers, as well as two crew members in the hijacker. These guys were, were serious about hijacking planes. Think of that. There was a history of hijacking planes. Uh, there is Omar Rezak. Uh, the remaining hijacker, Ozar Omar Rezak, came out of the cockpit only to be shot in the chest by a commando, throwing grenade as he went down. Captain Gilad uh, subsequently tried to uh, attack Rezak uh, with the uh, cockpit uh, fire axe, but Rezak managed to escape from the aircraft. He removed his hood and ammunition, pretended to be an injured passenger. Egyptian commandos tracked uh, Rezak uh, to St. Luke's General Hospital, where the doctors and the medical staff at gunpoint uh, entered the casualty ward looking for him. He was arrested in the hospital. Meanwhile, you got Nelson Mandela in South Africa, and there's still apartheid. On January 31st, the uh, state president, P.W. Botha, offered so, a release proposal to imprison African National Congress deputy leader Nelson Mandela. On February 10th, Mandela rejects W.P. Botha's offer of conditional release. Riots and protests continue in South Africa against apartheid policies. On March 31st, an estimated 47 people are killed in the Langa massacre when uh, police opened fire on a crowd at the 25th commemoration of the Sharpeville Massacre, Massacre of 1960, uh, demonstration marches in uh, Langa and Port Elizabeth. On April 15th, South Africa ended the ban on interracial marriage. Well, Ronald Reagan has a big problem. It's called the Iran-Contra Affair. Basically, what he's going to do is basically send uh, arms to Iran and try to get uh, hostages out of Lebanon. In early November, at the suggestion of the head of the Security Council, Robert Bud McFarlane, Reagan authorized a secret initiative to sell anti-tank and anti-craft missiles, aircraft missiles to Iran in exchange for the country's help in security. Uh, the release of Americans held hostage by terrorist groups in Lebanon. The initiative directly contradicted the administration's publicly stated policy of refusing to negotiate with terrorists or to aid countries such as Iran that supported international terrorism. No one knew about that initiative until 1986. Have I been to Gibraltar? I have. You've been to Gibraltar. Did the monkeys try to pickpocket you? Yes, they those, did. <laughs> those monkeys, those monkeys, are really quick. 
they could spot a pocketbook. They could unzipper the pocketbook and pickpocket you. But you didn't know that. They could. I was pickpocketed on a bus in London. In London. In London. Yeah. Anyway, that's my wife. That's uh, Gibraltar, and it opens its borders. On February 5th, the United Kingdom and Spain reopened the border between Gibraltar and Spain. In the 1950s, Spain, then under the dictatorship of Francisco Franco, the fascist, renewed its claim to sovereignty over Gibraltar, sparked in part by a, queen, by a visit of Queen Elizabeth II, passed away two weeks ago, uh, to celebrate the 250th anniversary of the Rock's capture. For the next 30 years, Spain restricted movement between Gibraltar and Spain. A referendum was held on September 10, 1967, in which Gibraltar voters were asked whether they wished to either pass under Spanish sovereignty or remain British sovereigns uh, with institutions of self-government. The vote was in favor of continuing British sovereignty. 12,138 said yes, 44 said no uh, to uh, uh, English sovereignty. Uh, in response, Spain completely closed the border with Gibraltar and severed all communication links. This is Live Aid. How many of you remember Live Aid back in 1985? Okay, I have a personal story about Live Aid. It's a guy by the name of Hal Uplinger. 1984, I meet Hal Uplinger, a guy named Eric Moffat. I'm 28 years old. And Hal says, we're going to start a sports radio network, and you're going to be one of the people I'm starting with, along with it. OK, that's cool. Hal had a, uh, an extensive background in television. In fact, he and Tony Verder uh, started or, uh, or experimented with either instant replay as early as 1963 in Los Angeles. And finally, the Army-Navy football game, 1963, was used. Anyway, uh, my boss, Hal Uplinger. Gives me a call in 1985, and he says, uh, I'm leaving. I'm going to do a musical project. You and Eric Moffat just carry on. SRN died, but Hal went on to greater things. He had a deal with uh, complicated logistics and the satellite setup, and he did. He produced the American side of Live 8 and was responsible for the international distribution of the 16-hour broadcast in 155 countries and raised $283.7 million for the Band Aid Trust. And that is uh, one of the crowds, England. Uh, do they know It's Christmas was a best-selling single, a single in Britain to that date and raised uh, more than $10 million in 1984. Do they know it's Christmas was the number one hit in the United States inspired U.S. pop artists to come together and perform We Are the World, a song jointly written by Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie. USA for Africa. The song went to the top of the charts and eventually, eventually would raise $44 million. Live Aid was the idea of a singer of an Irish rock group by the name of the Boomtown Rats, Bob Gilmore. In 1984, Gildar traveled to Ethiopia after hearing news of horrific famine that had killed hundreds of thousands of Ethiopians and threatened to kill more, millions more. After returning to London, he called Britain's and Ireland's top pop artists together to record a single to benefit Ethiopian famine relief. Do they know it's Christmas? And there is Gildar. With the crisis in Ethiopia and the neighboring Sudan, uh, also stricken by uh, famine, Gelgar proposed Live Aid, global charity concert aimed at raising more funds and increasing awareness of the plight of many Africans. Live Aid took place on July 13th. There were more than 75 acts, including Elton John, Queen, Madonna, Santana, Roy Run DMC, Sade, Sting, Brian Adams, The Beach Boys, Mick Jagger, David Bowie, Duran Duran, U2, The Who, Tom Petty, Neil Young, and Eric Clapton. The majority of these, often, uh, these artists performed either at Wembley Stadium in London, uh, where 70,000 people turned out, or JFK Stadium, the old municipal stadium in Philadelphia, where 100,000 people showed up. Uplinger, my buddy Uplinger, was in charge of 13 satellites, video of 13 satellites being uh, the first live broadcast to more than a billion viewers 
to uh, 110 countries, and I'm sitting back in New York saying, Hal, why'd you leave us? <laughs> why'd you leave us, Hal? You left us stranded because you're feeding the world. More than 40 of these nations held telephones for Afghan relief during the broadcast. Hal and I were friends until his death in 2011. In fact, he was living in Brazil, and he invited me and my wife to come down to Brazil, but he was in Los Angeles visiting his daughter. He was about 83 years old. And my friend Shelly Saltman, yeah, Shelly, I'm talking about you. Every talk I talk about you, the late Shelly Saltman. His name was Shelly Saltman? Yeah, he was beaten up by Evil Knievel. What did he do? Because the name sounds familiar. Uh, he did the Bobby Riggs, Billie Jean King production. Uh, he was beaten up sounds... by Evil Knievel, among other things. So, and he was my friend. I've talked about Shelly before. Yeah, Shelly, put down the phone. You're not going to reach me, even though you think you are. He once asked me, he said, you know, after you die, what time zone are you in? I said, what? Why? You going to call me? Anyway, more than uh, so. Anyway, uh, Hal said he wasn't feeling well, and uh, Shelley said, "You're a vet. Why don't you go to the VA hospital and see what's wrong?" Uh, they did. He had very fast spreading cancer. I never got to go to Brazil, and he died within like a month after being diagnosed. Didn't take any medicine. No medicine. Just wanted to go. Uh, Hal and I were friends until 2011. Meanwhile, there's Bob Dylan, who's still around 37 years later. Willie Nelson, Neil Young, John Mellencamp organized the first Farm Aid concept in 1985 to raise awareness about the loss of family farms and raise uh, funds to keep family farms on the land. First concert held September 22nd, Champaign, Illinois, before 80,000 people. The performers included Bob Dylan, Billy Joel, B.B. King, Loretta Lynn, Roy Orbison, Tom Petty, and it raised $9 million. Okay, this guy is Richie Phillips. None of you know who Richie Phillips is, and that's okay. You don't have to know who Richie Phillips is. But because of Richie Phillips, I got to hang out with Dick Nixon. I got to hang out with Dick Nixon. Here's the background. Richie Phillips headed the Major League Baseball Umpires Association, and he lived in the Philadelphia Society Hill off the main line. His next door neighbors were David and Julie Eisenhower. And uh, he's Richard Nixon's son-in-law. And uh, well, uh, uh, I drove with Pat every week from, from Park Ridge down to Philadelphia because uh, I'm babysitting. Uh, let me make that perfectly clear, Junior. You pick up those toys. <laughs> anyway, so he drive down from Upper Saddle River or Park Ridge, New Jersey on the weekends to babysit the grandkids. Phillips and the other owners uh, had a problem over money. And uh, there was an impasse. Phillips said to Major League Baseball uh, Commissioner uh, Peter Ubrov, uh, why don't we go to arbitration? And Nixon should be the arbitrator. Hey, that's a good idea, Peter Ubrov said. You, yeah, you know Richard Nixon. Well, he's, he's, my, you know, he's my neighbor's father-in-law and father. Uh, call me Dick. That is a real choreograph of uh, Richard Nixon. He uh, took out a ruler. And he puts it at the bottom of the index card and he signs to make sure he doesn't go along the ruler. Takes off the ruler and then <laughs> the X. Call me Dick. Yeah, he told me, uh, call me Dick because I said to him, Mr. President, uh, 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 no, uh, uh, call me Dick. And I did. For the rest of his life, I saw him, uh, hi Dick, because I thought I'd be respectful even though he wasn't respectful. Anyway, Nixon had been a baseball friend who had friends on both sides and agreed to arbitrate the dispute between the major league owners and the umpires over how much money the umpires will get for working the expanded 1985 playoffs. Nixon ruled the 12 working umpires in the playoffs were entitled to a 40% increase in compensation, which amounts to an increase of about $4,000. <laughs> Richard Nixon began his road to rehabilitation. He was rehabilitated thanks to Richie Phillips and becomes a senior statesman. See, I bet you didn't know that, but he does. Uh, the baseball strike in 1985, it lasts two days, shortest of all Major League Baseball labor stoppage to that point. Uh, the strike lasted August 6th and 7th. It was the sixth labor stoppage um, through lockouts or strikes in Major League Baseball history. The owners agreed to make a large increase in their contributions to the players' pension plan, and the players agreed to salary arbitration concessions. 
Now, how many of you got your kicks on Route 66? No? It was a record. It was a record, but were you on Route 66? No. I've been on parts of Route 66. Where did it go? It went well. It went from Chicago down to St. Louis. <laughs> Oklahoma City looks mighty pretty. Have you seen Amarillo? Gallup, New Mexico. Flagstaff, Arizona. Don't forget Winona, Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino. Get your kicks on Route 66. I've been in Kingman. I've been in Flagstaff uh, on Route 66 and in Santa Monica. U.S. 66 was officially decommissioned on June 27th after it was decided the route was no longer rele relevant and then replaced by the interstate highway system. Route 66 no longer exists on modern maps in some places. In fact, the physical road is unpaved and virtually impassable. Bobby Troop, remember Bobby Troop? No. He's married to Julie London. At the time, I used to have a crush on Julie London when I was 12 years old. Anyway, that was 1968. Bobby Troop got the idea for Route 66 song, the song, on the cross-country drive from Pennsylvania to California. Troop wanted to try his hand as a Hollywood songwriter. Bobby and his then wife Cynthia packed up their 1941 Buick and headed west. The trip began on US 40 and continued along US 66 to the California coast. Oh, I didn't like this. I didn't like this at all. New Coke. Um, Get great new taste, change for the best. It's a change for the worst. I gave up Coca-Cola. I gave it up. So did a lot of other people back then. On April 23rd, Coca-Cola launched New Coke. Uh, that was sweeter, but different from the original uh, version. It's terrible. It's just terrible. The 99-year-old company was looking to update its image in a, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it category. It wasn't broke. They decide to fix it. People participating in focus groups like the new formula. I was in the focus group. I was in the focus group. I screwed them up terribly. I totally screwed them up. Uh, new Coke turned out to be one of the worst and most expensive marketing blunders. Fans of the original Coke version rebelled against the new formula. I was one of them, I'm proud to say, and refused to accept it. On July 11th, the company switched back to Old Coke. Rebranding it, Coke Classic. Okay. okay, this computer has a Windows 11. Windows 1 came out in 1985 on November 20th. It was released for personal computers developed by Microsoft critics and uh, said Windows 1 could not compete with Apple's GUI operating system and was also criticized for slowness and uh, compatibility with very little software. Steve Jobs leaves Apple in 1985. Uh, he, leaves, he loses a boardroom battle with John Scully. Uh, CEO Jobs was recruited from Pepsi. Jobs decided to leave Apple, feeling forced out of the company he started. He officially departed September 16th. He took with him a number of Apple employees to start Next Inc., his follow-up computer company. Uh, in 1985-1986, in that era, uh, politicians and their wives were a little upset with some of the lyrics of songs, uh, particularly Al Gore's wife, Tipper, uh, Tipper Gore, and uh, that is Dee Snyder, who was the head of Twisted Sister, lead singer of Twisted Sister. In 1984, Mary Tipper Gore, the wife of Democratic Senator Al Gore, had stumbled across the Prince song, Darling Nikki, with her daughter, uh, Karina. Uh, horrified by its undisguised references to masturbation, Tipper Gore began investigating the extent to which popular music was exposing impressionable youngsters to sex and violence. Gore and several other senatorial spouses, collectively dubbed the Washington Wives, started high profile pressure group, uh, a high profile pressure group, Parents Music Resource Center, using funds donated by well heeled benefactors. The PMRC drew up the Filthy 15 songs uh, with lyrics they deemed questionable, including Mercy Fates, Into the COVID, lyrically contented, uh, occult, Cindy Lauper's Sheba, about sex, Twisted Sister, We're Not Gonna Take It, violence, Dee Snyder of uh, Twisted Sister, he, Frank Zapper, and John Denver appeared before Congress. And there is Dee Snyder. 
wearing skin tight jeans, snakeskin boots, his eyes lined with mascara, Snyder walked into the U.S. Senate Commerce and Science and Transportation Committee to confront congressmen and their wives. The twisted sister singer represented everything they found repugnant about rock and roll. Sounds like the 1950s all over again. And they were posed to rip them to shreds. But the problem was, they picked the wrong guy. He said, Miss Gore claimed that one of my songs, Under the Blade, had lyrics encouraging uh, sadomasochistic bondage and rape. Uh, the lyrics she quoted from have absolutely nothing to do with these topics. On the contrary, the words in question are about the surgery and the fear and stills in people. I can categorically say that the only sadomasochism, bondage, and rape in the song is in the mind of Mrs. Gore. But there was a worry about John Denver. What was John Denver going to say? What was John Denver going to say? Was he going to agree with D. Snyder, or was he going to put the knife into D. Snyder? Well, Snyder and Frank Zappa were worried about what John Denver was going to say. <laughs> Didn't have to worry. John Denver made powerful statements likening the censorship movement to Nazi book burnings. My God. Today, today, you have books that are being censored. In fact, uh, I just got a job in September by Zoom. It's September, a year from now. Uh, Band Book Week in Naperville, Illinois, that I'm doing by Zoom about censorship. Protest against music. Yeah, there it is. There's protest, but there's always protest against rock and roll music, whether it was Elvis, Little Richard, The Beatles, whatever. Uh, ultimately, after the Recording Industry Association of America agreed to place parental advisor stickers on select albums, the recording industry did not topple. Metal sales and sales in general remained strong and were booming by the 90s. Labels started, putting, started to put out uh, clean and explicit versions of albums to widen their retail reach. And stickers probably helped sell more records to kids who were enticed by the idea of listening to something that would shock and offend their parents. Anybody here who uh, came of age in the mid-1950s who liked rock and roll? Nobody? Same thing 30 years later. Same thing. Anyway, Walmart and other stores refused to sell any albums that featured these parental advisory stickers. So how many of you still watch this show? The Golden Girls. The Golden Girls. How many of you still watch that? Great. Great? It's been off the air forever. Uh, Golden Girls, an American sitcom created by Susan Harris, debuts on NBC uh, on September 14th. B. Arthur, Betty White, Rue McClanahan. And the girls, uh, Estelle Getty, or the stars. Excuse me. Yeah. Didn't they make a big party for what's his name recently? Who? He just had his hundredth birthday. Who Wears the hat all the time. Norman Lear. Norman Lear. Yeah, he had nothing to do with that. The show. They claimed he had everything. That Not night. this show. Not this show. You think he had Maud? You think he had Maud in One Day at a Time? He had nothing to do with this show. It was done by Susan Harris. Oh, uh, the show's plot revolved around four older single women, three widows and the divorcee sharing a yeah. house in Miami. Mike Tyson is still around. Mike Tyson had so much boxing talent that he wasted. He made his professional debut as an 18-year-old on March 6th in Albany. He defeated Hector Mercedes, first round TKO. He had 15 bets in his first year as a professional. How old is he? Right now, Mike Tyson would be 55 years old. Super Mario Brothers. Anybody have kids who oh, play? The kids love that. The kids kid love it. Your kids love it. Kid. Yeah, your kids love it. How many of that of those did you buy? Yeah, my boys. Your boys love it, right? They fight over it? Uh-huh. Did they fight over it too? <laughs> you don't want to tell them. They fought over it, right? <laughs> my my granddaughters are three and ten months old and they're beginning to fight over toys. And I got to tell my three-year-old granddaughter about babysitting. Uh, you can't do this. She's only 10 months old. Yeah. But she loves my, my three-year-old granddaughter. She has no problems with that. Anyway, Super Mario Brothers, uh, the Nintendo Entertainment System, was released in North American markets in October. The home gaming system had previously been released in Japan in 1983. The NES was originally launched with 17 games, including Duck Hunt and Ice Climber. 
The system did not initially sell as the market for home video games had dropped, but Nintendo's U.S. release of the breakout game Super Mario Brothers was a difference. Uh, NES caught on in the U.S. Donald Trump, Herschel Walker, was running for Senate in Georgia. Um, I first met Donald Trump in September 1983, bought the uh, United States Football League's New Jersey Generals. And uh, in my 1986 talk, I talked about all these characters I met during this. Anyway, on July 14th, the three-year-old USFL, or the United States Football League, staged its final game, a championship contest at the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Baltimore defeated Oakland. The big question surrounding the game was the USFL's future. Would there be some sort of agreement uh, allowing some USFL teams to enter the National Football League? Would the league shift to a fall schedule in 1986? Would the USFL sue the NFL on antitrust grounds? Donald Trump would lead uh, the USFL into an antitrust lawsuit with the NFL. Titanic is found. Let's raise the Titanic. August uh, 1985, Robert Ballard uh, used a French, uh, American French expedition uh, from aboard the U.S. Navy research ship NOR. September 1st, the first underwater images of the Titanic were recorded as its giant boilers were discovered. Later video showed the ship lying upright in two pieces. While the bow was clearly recognizable, the storm section was severely damaged. The expedition found no signs of the long gash previously thought to have been ripped in the ship's hull by the iceberg. Scientists instead discovered that the collision impact had produced a series uh, of collision impact and produced a series of thin gashes as well as brittle fracturing and separation of seams in adjacent hull plants, thus allowing the water to flood and sink the ship. Like where, like where was it found? On the, near uh, Halifax, the bottom of the sea, in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, near Halifax. Uh, how many of you like Twinkies? How many of you like eating Twinkies? Twinkies, oh god, yes. Yeah, you like Twinkies. Cookies, they were. No, they were, they were little cakes. In a package. Yeah, they were little cakes. They were little cakes. Well, this guy, James A. Doerr, invented the Twinkie, and he died that year. 88-year-old James A. Doerr. The inventor of Twinkies in 1930 died. It was labeled junk food by nutritionists and received unfavorable publicity as the so-called Twinkie defense in the 1979 Dan Murder, Dan White murder case in San Francisco, in the November 27, 1978 assassination of the San Francisco mayor George Moscani and supervisor Harvey Milk. The little cakes were filled with sweet cream and became part of America's diet. They had nothing to do with the liquor people? No. By the way, I didn't like Twinkies. Devil Neither. dogs. Neither did I. Devil dogs. I love devil dogs. Yankee doodles. Twinkies. Yeah. Durer said he ate at least two packages of Twinkies a week, vigorously defended the wholesomeness of the snack, which has been described <laughs> as the cream puff of the proletariat. Uh, White committed suicide in San Francisco at his home October 21st. Um, yeah, Calvin and Hobbes, anybody read this comic strip that <laughs> debuted in 1985? Uh, and it was across the country, written by Bill Watterson, uh, was syndicated starting November 18th. Calvin is a precocious, mischievous, and adventurous six-year-old boy. Hobbes uh, is sardonic stuffed tiger. Set in suburban United States, the strip depicts Calvin's frequent flights of fancy and friendship with Hobbes. Uh, Calvin's relationship with his long-suffering parents and with his classmates and his neighbor, <coughs> Susie Durkins, are explored. Well, 1985. What is left from 1985? Well, Mikhail Gorbachev, the last Soviet leader, died on August 30th of this year. In six years, between 1985 and 1991, he forged armed treaties with the United States and partnerships with Western powers to remove the Iron Curtain that had divided Europe since World War II and bring the reunification of Germany. But his internal reforms, combining with economic and political liberalization, uh, helped weaken the Soviet Union to the point where it fell apart, a moment that Russian President Vladimir Putin once called the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century. 
Here is one of the terrorists, uh, Mohammed uh, Zadin, Abu Abbas. He was never arrested. 1990, he struck again from the sea with an abortive speed uh, boat attack on bathers near a beach in Tel Aviv. He was captured by U.S. forces in a raid in Iraq, April 15, 2003. He died March 9, 2004, at the age of 56, from natural causes in custody in Iraq. Uh, Mohammed Ali Hamadeh uh, was arrested at Frankfurt Airport January 13, 1987, carrying explosives in his luggage. The U.S. sought extradition. The Federal Republic of Germany decided to prosecute him in Germany. And on May 17, 1989, convicted him of murder, hostage-taking, assault, hijacking. He was sentenced to prison. On December 15, 2005, he was uh, released from custody, went back to Beirut. On December 16, 2005, he is still wanted by U.S. authorities. Uh, Ahmed uh, Mungie was killed in a 2008 bombing in Damascus while uh, Hassan is al-Din and Ali Atwa have remained at large. The 1986 film, Delta Force, is based on the hijacking, and there is the hijacking. Uh, Ali Rezak uh, was charged, sentenced to tr and trial to 25 years in prison. He was released after seven years, re-arrested in Nigeria soon after his release, extradited to the United States where he faced one single charge of air piracy. He was sentenced to life in prison and continues to serve his sentence in prison in Illinois. Until September 11, 2001, Egypt Air Flight 648 was the most fatal hijacking of an aircraft and remains the most fatal episode in Malta's peacetime history. Middle East remains a powder keg. The Nobel Peace Prize in 1994 went to uh, Yasser Arafat, Shimon Peres, and Yitzhak Rabin, their efforts to uh, create peace in the Middle East. Partha ended in the 1990s in South Africa. On September 26, more than 22 million South Africans turned out to cast ballots in the country's first multiracial parliamentary elections in history. Overwhelming majority uh, chose the end the ANC to lead the country, and on November 10th, Nelson Mandela was sworn in as the first black president of South Africa, while uh, with the clerk, uh, his first deputy. Bush pardons a whole bunch of people in the uh, Iraq, uh, in the Iran Contra affair. Um, uh, Reagan doesn't get blamed. Bush uh, doesn't get blamed. Members of the Reagan administration avoided punishment. John Poindexter was uh, convicted on several counts, but his convictions overturned because of his uh, immunized testimony. <coughs> Defense Secretary Casper Weinberg was indicted for perjury, obstruction of justice, but 1992, George H.W. Bush gave him a pardon, as did Robert McFarland give a pardon, the National Security Advisor, and several lower ranking individuals such as Elliot Abrams. Uh, this is in 2005, Bob Geldof staged a series of live aid concerts in 11 countries to help uh, raise the awareness of global poverty organizers led by Geldof, uh, purposely scheduled the concerts day before the annual G8 summit in an effort to increase political pressure on G8 nations to address such issues. Uh, facing the extremely poor around the world. Farm aid goes on every year. Steve Jobs became a billionaire. He would buy George, he would go into business with uh, George Lucas, uh, but returned to Apple in 1997. Richard Nixon benefited from uh, his Major League Baseball umpire dispute. He became an elder statesman. Uh, at the time of his death in 1994, he was viewed more favorable by Americans despite the Watergate crimes. Coca-Cola Classic, that's out there. Uh, Coca-Cola rebranded new Coke formula, Coke 2, in 1990, abandoned the idea in 2022. On May 21st, 2019, Coca-Cola announced that the 1985 reformation of new Coke would be reintroduced in small qualities because it was part of the next flick series, Stranger Things. The series included, from 1995, included Coke cans. Mike Tyson uh, would win the uh, World Heavyweight Championship November 22, 1986. The award-winning Golden Girls 
end in production on uh, May 9th, 1992. There were 180 shows, which are still seen today, that you watch. Uh, that's me in the middle with Harvey Meyerson, the United States Football League attorney, who ended up in jail, hired by Donald Trump. Not going to make any, uh, any statements about that other than he ended up in jail because he built clients, as did uh, his uh, partner, Dan uh, Cooper. Uh, and he lived out his life in disgrace in Florida. On November 26, 1986, Mike Tyson beat Trevor Burrick to win the World Boxing Council Heavyweight Championship, youngest champion in history, um, and, uh, well, you know, um, goes on with his life. <coughs> the award-winning uh, uh, Golden Girls, as I said, ended in 1992. The USFL came back in 2002, a smaller version of it owned by Fox. Um, these stickers, well, these stickers are still around in some ways. In uh, March, in rather June 2010, Alan Tipper Gore separated. Uh, Dee Snyder and his wife Suzette were still married since 1981. Uh, Calvin and Hobbes comic strip lasted 11 years. Not planned, the comic strip coincided with the beginning and the end of the newspaper domination in media. She was found a few years ago. Green Eyed Girl from uh, National Geographic cover fled Afghanistan in 2021 uh, because the Taliban gained control of the, uh, of the area. Uh, Sharbet Bula is her name. She's in Italy. National Twinkies Day, such a thing. Hostess Brand produces more than 1 million Twinkies a day, 400 million Twinkies a year. On average, 1,123 Twinkies are made every minute. The inspiration for the name Twinkies came from a Twinkie Toe Shoes billboard that the inventor and baker, a doer, saw on his way to show off his idea. The original Twinkies were filled with banana cream, which was later changed to vanilla cream during World War II because of banana rationing. Twinkies last 45 days. Thank you. Any questions, any comments? Very interesting. Pick a good year for the next, next time. Uh, we're going to do 1984. There we go. Oh, no, no. Next time I'm here, we're doing Italian American Month. Yeah, what year? Italian American Month. We're going to celebrate Italian American Month. Very interesting. So, anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, people get so late. That's okay. Thanks, Adam. If you're watching a movie. Well, you know, people have choices, right? <laughs>